Hello there, and welcome to the first ever Flashback Friday. This is my brand new series where every Friday we... Oh, wait, what do, what do we do again? Where we flash back. You see, one of the things I pride myself on here at YouTube is giving you advice that will last a lifetime. Unfortunately, not all YouTubers have these same values. Would you believe that some YouTubers make videos that are out of date the very next day? It's more likely than you think. And so that is the point of Flashback Fridays. It is to flash back to the long, long past of a few months ago and see what YouTubers are saying and if the advice holds up. Spoiler alert, most of the time it will not. So let's reach into my little goodie bag here. Hold on. Ah, there we, there we go. Everything I need should be, should be right here. And, oh look, it's Andre Jick. Yes, today we're going to be talking about Andre Jick. Now, Andre is one of the biggest YouTubers on the platform, and I'll get the good parts out of the way now. The guy is absolutely incredible at making YouTube videos. He is an incredibly masterful video editor. His videos are fun, easy to watch, and they're beautifully made. Something that I hope to accomplish uh, one day in the near future. And speaking of things that Andre is good at that I'm jealous of, uh, he is incredibly good at magic. I mean, incredibly, incredibly good at magic. I've always wanted to be good at magic, but unfortunately I've never been very good with my hands, said every girlfriend I've ever had. Now unfortunately, the exact same traits that makes Andre such a good magician and a video editor and a YouTuber is also one of his downfalls. Because you see, Andre is incredibly, incredibly enthusiastic, we'll say. Um, anytime he finds something new, he gets enamored with it. So whether that's YouTubing or magic or crypto or NFTs, uh, the list goes on and on. The guy gets very excited, and I think sometimes he struggles with taking the good from the bad. And so on today's Flashback Friday, we will be going over what Andre has been saying about Bitcoin for the last year and how it's held up. With that out of the way, let's get into today's video. My name is Investing with Cole. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay for the Flashback Fridays. So since this is the first Flashback Friday, I'm kind of playing around with the format. We're going to keep things simple. We're just going to go over two videos from Andre. We have when Bitcoin will hit 100,000 and we have prepare for Bitcoin to 500,000. And so we're just going to kind of go over these two videos and see what Andre has said. These are both uploaded last year. So let's see how some of his comments about Bitcoin have played out. I love this shirt. Bitcoin to the moon. So ultimately the question is, to anyone left not investing in Bitcoin, do you want to end up like this guy who sold his Bitcoin in July and missed out on a 200% return? Hopefully not. So if you clicked on this video and you watch it all the way through, I can convince you not to do that because this is just the start. Yeah, guys, this is just the start. You, you don't want to be like this moron who sold a year ago, do you? I mean, you I mean, look how stupid you would feel if you had sold July 2021. Bitcoin to the moon! You would have completely missed out on this incredible, incredible Bitcoin run. And remember, it's just the start, guys. It's going to keep coming. You get the idea. Whenever there's a problem, the government will step in and fix the problem by changing some numbers on a balance sheet, which allows them to use that money to buy up bonds and corporate debt and other assets. Okay, so I wouldn't play this scene if just like the average person said this, but the fact that he has 2 million subscribers and his full-time job is studying finance and investing and stuff, you'd think he wouldn't get the government and the Federal Reserve mixed up, but... He does, so I just thought that was worth pointing out because you should maybe you should maybe know the difference between those things. I don't I don't know. Our parents, for example, when they were growing up and they were taught to invest, if they were ever even taught to invest, mine weren't, they didn't learn through YouTube. They learned through old books that told them to invest 60% of their money into stocks and the other 40% into bonds. Now, that allocation, that spread today, means they would be losing money to inflation. Now, for some people, that means putting 100% of their money into stocks, which means you would outpace inflation. And for some people, that means putting their money into Bitcoin, which is why some people are calling it the fastest horse in the race, because it is the best thing against inflation. Oh boy, there's a, a lot to talk about there, so much that I'm probably gonna forget some of the stuff he said. Uh, we'll start with the last thing he said. What was that about Bitcoin is the fastest horse in the race against inflation? 
you'll 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 notice he does this a lot. And this is the side any big YouTube channel, if you want to have a million subscribers, you have to say opinions with 100 percent confidence and just just pretend that they're facts. Like even if it's just your opinion that Bitcoin will outpace inflation more than stocks, don't don't say that it's your opinion. Just say it's the best thing against inflation, which people said the entire bull run and then it's not been the case so far. Because who would have guessed uh, during a recession and high inflation, people aren't dropping $50,000 on a Bitcoin anymore. Who could have seen this coming? It's almost like people would prefer uh, cars and houses and food. For some reason, Bitcoin is, has not kept up with inflation. Uh, I'm not sure why though, it's it's really a mystery. Bitcoin to the moon! And then there's this, uh, this obsession that uh, a lot of, especially younger investors seem to have with, uh, you have to always beat inflation, you can't have negative returns in a year. One, I highly doubt we're gonna have eight to 10% inflation for the rest of your investing life. And if we did, if we just had 8% inflation for the next 40 years, uh, bonds and stocks would adapt to that. They would, there would not be bonds paying 2% for the next 40 years if inflation's always at 8%. So yeah, maybe that portfolio lost to inflation like this year, but there's more decades to come. There's a lot more time. And, and just because inflation is higher, doesn't mean you suddenly just start buying whatever. They didn't learn through YouTube. They learn through old books. I like how condescending he is. He's like, yeah, my parents, they had to learn through books that, that taught them proper portfolio management. And I'm not necessarily recommending a 60-40 allocation, especially, you know, if you're around my age or Andre's age, but you don't invest in something just to, to always outpace inflation. You, you still invest in what gives you the best overall return. So let's say uh, stocks give you 5% a year and inflation's 10% a year. So in real returns, you have negative 5%. That, that doesn't mean you go, oh, I'll just buy a lottery ticket because the expected outcome of a lottery ticket is way worse than negative 5% real returns. You don't go riskier just because of inflation. You still, you still pick the highest expected return. And if you think that's Bitcoin, I can't really argue with you because the main reason I don't buy Bitcoin is because you can't value it. So it, it totally could outpace inflation better than stocks, but that's just kind of a guess. My main point is, what would Andre do if Bitcoin was gaining 20% a year, but inflation was 50% a year? Would he start making videos like, oh yeah, you know, people put all their money into Bitcoin, but it doesn't outpace inflation. So we've had to go into riskier assets. I'm buying lottery tickets now. And here's the best part of the video. Here is his, his price prediction for Bitcoin. So now let's talk about everyone's favorite part, the price. The most accurate and most importantly, reliable price predictor that I was able to find is based on Plan B's stock to flow model. And in his worst case scenario, the price of each Bitcoin by the end of December will be worth $135,000, which is insane. That is 2X from today's prices. I challenge anyone to find me a stock or a piece of real estate that will 2X in the next two to three months. This is what I love about Andre. As I said, he just, you just, if you want to be huge on YouTube, but just, just take an opinion and just say it as a fact. If you came to me and you said, oh, look at the stock to flow model, a uh, Bitcoin is going to double in the next two months, worst case scenario, it's going to double in the next two months. If you brought that to me, I would say, oh, so there's something wrong with the model. Because if an asset was actually going to double in two months, people would be bidding up the price. Uh, so clearly there's some, either something's wrong with the model or it's incredibly unlikely. It's giving it like a, like a 5% chance or something of happening. Andre, on the other hand, Andre hears, hey, you want to double your money in two months? And he just goes, wow, what a great opportunity. He, he has, he has no, he has no skepticism of anything. He would just, he's an optimist. I'll give him the, the guy is an optimist. You, you tell him anything and he gets excited. He would, not, he will not question it whatsoever. Like theoretically, if a company promised to pay you like 9% if you just keep your Bitcoin there, 
Andre would just throw like half a million dollars into it. He doesn't care. When it comes to storing that crypto though, I keep it on two places, which is BlockFi and Voyager. For example, I keep my Bitcoin on Voyager. It's an incredible app that gives you 5.75% interest rate on your money, which is great, but their customer service is not so great. <laughs> Sign him up. He gets the best, best of both worlds. What could go, 9%, what could go wrong? But the best case scenario, according to Plan B's stock to flow, is $450,000. This does not sound real, but it could end up happening. Andre, you do not. There is no way you think Bitcoin was going to go up 9x in two months. There is no way you thought it was hitting half a million dollars within two months of your video. You have, you have to have some, I would see this model. I would see this model and go, oh, it's not accurate. How did he not question this? How genuinely, how did he not see that there were some flaws with this? Because he kept saying all year that he thought Bitcoin would hit 100,000 by the end of the year based solely on the stock to flow model thing. I'll say this, I think Andre would make a fantastic friend. I mean, this guy has your back. Like you could go to Andre and be like, oh, Andre, do you want to invest in my new company? Oh yeah, sure, what is it? Well, you know how people like find oysters and sometimes there's a pearl inside. I'm going to sell pearls with oysters inside of them. And Andre's like, oh, that's so smart. You can look nice and eat. Like, well, who wouldn't? Here, here's a million dollars. Andre's got your back. This dude, this dude will believe in anything. And in some cases, hey, that, that's pretty good. That's, that's a friend that always has your back. And I appreciate that. Okay, now we'll get on with our second video. Which, if you thought his Bitcoin to 100,000 video was already crazy enough, now we have prepare for Bitcoin to 500,000. Maybe keep your expectations at 100,000. That one was a little closer to happening. This one's maybe a bit extreme. And just real quick to give you guys uh, some behind the scenes clips. Basically like a week ago before I recorded this, I went go watch through some old Andre videos and I, I took little timestamps basically on a, a Google Doc about like important key points in the video and I have this timestamp and the only note I wrote is stupidest thing ever in all caps and I this is so long ago that I don't remember what I was talking about so I'm interested to see when we get to that point in the video. <laughs> so just the other day I was thinking if I had to start from scratch if I had cash but I was wondering what should I invest my money into stocks real estate, cryptocurrency, specifically Bitcoin, what would be the fastest path to $1 million <laughs> is to invest in Bitcoin. Once again, you have to love Andre. Just, 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 just zero evidence to back up his claims. Just, just straight up. Like if you want to be a millionaire as fast as possible, buy Bitcoin. Do you, what, what are you, what are you basing that on? Just buy Bitcoin, dude. Uh, no stocks, no real estate? No, not at all, dude. Dude, if I was broke and I had to be a millionaire as fast as possible, I would just put all my money into Bitcoin. There's no, not gonna give you any explanation, not gonna give you any facts. Just, just Bitcoin is the fastest way. Bitcoin to the moon! Y you have to love Andre, the dude, the dude. I'm gonna say this about, basically go watch any of his videos. He's just, he's an optimistic guy. He's, he's, he'll cheer you up. Hang, hang out with Andre for a day. You're gonna be the happiest guy on the planet. This guy doesn't let anything get him down. So I was looking at a video with Kevin O'Leary, who is one of the investors on the TV series hit show Shark Tank. Oh yes, uh, nobody more credible than Kevin O'Leary. Let's, let's see what he has to say about this. And in his video, he was talking about how he thinks Bitcoin will beat the S&P 500 index by 400 basis points. Now, I agree with Kevin, and I think Bitcoin will beat stocks, but I disagree with him on how much, because I think he's being overly conservative. Realistically, I think Bitcoin will beat the S&P 500 by at least 9 to 10%. So, dude, I love, I love Andre so much. Oh my God. You know, Kevin O'Leary isn't like the greatest guy on the planet, but he's more credible than Andre, I, I guess I would say. And he makes a, a wild claim that Bitcoin will beat the S&P 500 by 400 basis points for I think like the next decade or so, which, which is a, a bold claim to make. He could be right though. Meanwhile, Andre just comes in and he's like, yeah, that's a cool claim and stuff, but realistically it's gonna beat it by 10%. No, no evidence, no facts, not, not just, he just say, he even says realistically. Yeah, look, Kevin, your, your guess, yeah, your guess is cool and all, but, but realistically, my guess is more, more real. 
Like, oh, why, why do you think your guess is more real? I just said it on a YouTube video. I have two million subscribers, Kevin O'Leary. Of, co of course my guesses are accurate. I've got two million people. Would two million people subscribe to someone who just makes stuff up? No, of course not. That's how you know my guess is more realistic. I think Bitcoin will reach $500,000 per coin before the end of this decade. Hey, we're on good pace for that so far. Okay, so this is the part where I wrote stupidest thing ever as the, the note for this timestamp. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to this. And let's just imagine you bought one whole Bitcoin at $37,000. And let's assume that nine years from today, at the exact same time, that one Bitcoin became worth $500,000. That is a rate of return of 1,251%. If you annualize that, that's a rate of return of 33.5% per year, which is a little over triple that of the S&P 500. Now let's assume that instead of buying one Bitcoin, you bought two. Two. That would make you a millionaire in this example by 2030. But let's imagine that instead of buying the two Bitcoins, you bought $74,000 worth, which is roughly the price of two Bitcoins today, into the S&P 500. When would you become a millionaire? In this case, you would become a millionaire in the year 2047, which is roughly 17 years after you would become a millionaire with Bitcoin. Oh my God, oh my God. Did he just say that? that? That's really his argument. To fill you guys in real quick, uh, there's a logical fallacy called begging the question, which, uh, quick side tangent, is a terrible translation. A uh, much better translation would be uh, assuming the conclusion, which you can probably guess from the name is exactly what Andre just did. He wanted to make the argument that Bitcoin will outperform stocks. Now, normally your argument is supposed to prove your conclusion, but instead, he just assumed the conclusion was right. He just said, oh, Bitcoin is going to outperform stocks. And, and to prove it, if Bitcoin gains 33% for the next 10 years and stocks only gain 10%, uh, Bitcoin will come out on top. Well, geez, Andre, did you think you biased your evidence a little bit? You can say this about anything. You can, you can say, oh, should I, should I buy uh, Bitcoin or gold? Uh, well, gold is going to outperform Bitcoin. Oh, oh, really? Why, why do you think that? Uh, well, if uh, gold goes up 50% a year and Bitcoin goes up 5% a year, gold is going to out way outperform it. You could, you could say this about Pop-Tarts. Like, oh, oh, Pop-Tarts. What if the price grows by 33% a year? You're going to feel real stupid buying stocks. It's it's not it's not even an argument. It's not even an argument. It's just all he did was he said a big number and then went, "Wow, isn't that a big number?" That's not an that's not an argument. What is th th this? Is nothing. What is this? And amazingly, in the exact same video where I think he might have said the dumbest thing ever, we have something else in contention in the same video for the stupidest thing ever. This is where. Andre is going to prove that Bitcoin is worth a million dollars. And it's probably the best proof I've ever heard of. Easily over a million dollars per Bitcoin. But either way, the best way I like to think about it is sort of like this. Remember, there's 42 million millionaires out there in this world, and there's not enough Bitcoin for each of them to own one. So if having a million dollar net worth is something that you're into, then I think the answer is pretty obvious. Okay, okay, hold on. Run that, run that by me one more time, Andre. So there's, there's 42 million millionaires, and there's less than 42 million Bitcoin. Uh, therefore, there has to be... Therefore, it has to be worth more than a million dollars. Going back to the, the previous thing we talked about, all his arguments for why you should buy Bitcoin just, just apply to anything. Like, like if, the, if there exists anything in the world with less than 42 million of them, by his logic, they have to be worth a million dollars. That would be like saying I could auction off my videos. Like, oh, I, yeah, I'm selling all my videos. How much are they worth? Uh, like a billion dollars because there's like more billionaires than there are my YouTube videos. So they have to be worth a billion dollars. It, it doesn't even make sense. That's not how scarcity works. Scarcity would work like that if that was the only thing people wanted, I guess. But he's ignoring the fact that maybe millionaires don't want to buy Bitcoin. Like he's, he's just, 
he is just assuming every single person in the world has to have a Bitcoin and nobody could ever not want it. In 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 which case, maybe I'll agree. If I'll, I'll, I'll agree with Andre on this. If if every single person in the world only wanted Bitcoin and they didn't want anything else in the world, I think it might go to a million dollars. I'll. Yeah, sure. I will I will give you that. So yes, this is my first ever Flashback Friday. If you did enjoy this style, let me know in the comments down below because it's my first time doing a video like this. And most importantly, if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button down below if you enjoyed the video because I plan on doing a lot more of these Flashback Fridays and I would greatly appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.